I have uh, been very interested in telemedicine since before the pandemic, but uh, in most of the world, telemedicine represents or did represent less than 1% of the medical care that was delivered in cancer care as well as in broad medical care up until the pandemic when it became a sudden need. We always had the technology for it, the bandwidth, et cetera, but it wasn't really implemented until there was the clear need triggered by the pandemic, as well as in the U.S. at least, a, a, a change in and a relaxation of some of the restrictions in, in privacy rules and state licensure that have always been barriers. And what we saw was a huge increase in the use of telemedicine in the spring of 2020 uh, with the onset of the pandemic that at least is a proof of principle that it could work. And in fact, in um, many, many different systems, they became suddenly 60, 80, 90 percent of the visits, at least for a period of time, were by telemedicine. And in many cases, and in fact, most cases, patients were pretty happy with them and many of the physicians were generally satisfied with them. The, the next iteration was looking at situations of where it might be best and, and not as well suited. And what we have seen in various, say, surveys of, of, of uh, physicians and specifically oncologists is that it is well suited for some settings, but not others. If you're reviewing uh, essentially benign uh, data follow-ups of patients who are stable on treatment or have completed their treatment, it's very much the right tool for the job, but it isn't ideal for a patient who is unstable, needs to be assessed directly, or where you're concerned that it might not have the same emotional connection as a live visit. At the same time, there are some patients who are just not as well suited because they may not have the technology skill or the bandwidth or the hardware, or they may have physical limitations in their, their hearing, their vision. Uh, they may have dementia. So I, th I would say that the key point of, of of the telemedicine work that we're seeing is that it is a valuable tool to continue to use longitudinally in our own system at City of Hope in Southern California. It constitutes about 18% of the ongoing visits we're doing. Uh, more for me, uh, but I, I am certainly a supporter of it, but it's not the right tool for every job. And I kind of liken it to uh, having a smartphone, which we got in the last eight, 10 years. Uh, we had laptops before and now we just put the, the smartphone next to our laptop and use them for different tasks rather than expecting that now that we have a smartphone we can chuck our laptop because you know the, we don't need it anymore they are each well suited for certain tasks and telemedicine is a tool that should continue to be used for certain situations but not as a wholesale replacement for live visits